Well, hello and welcome back. It is time once again to try to fix something. And today on the workbench, we're looking at another, uh, I guess we can call them PS5 fats these days, since the Slim is out. Um, I forgot which model this was. We'll check it later. But I think this is actually supposed to be a no power, a real no power, as in, yes, no eject, no, no beeps whatsoever. We do have power connected. Um, so yeah, let me get some uh, get a cover off. Let's just see if it's uh, been opened up before. All right, the cover is off, and is this a good sign? I'm not sure. A bag full of screws stuck under the uh, side plate. Is that a good sign? Uh, but yeah, the uh, security tape is gone, and yeah, there's that. A lot of screws, looks like. Uh, put this cover down. What screws? Okay, a little spacer for the M2 expansion. Uh, oh, the two screws that go in from the back, you know, to secure the uh, metal chassis. And some. Where are these black ones from? Hmm. Okay. This could get interesting, in a hurry. Let me get on into it. All right, well, the plastic side plate is off. Um, let's see, I'm still connected. Yeah, do we have 12 volts? Is it this one? No, it's the bottom one, 12 volts. So our power supply is not dead. Uh, what I, say, I would have to say it looks very clean in here. No roaches. I don't see a whole lot of missing screws, so that we got that going for us, but obviously um, somebody has been in here further than this. Uh, let's keep going. Well, I have the uh, metal cover off, and I can see that it's an EDM-10 mainboard. Uh, I'm not seeing any signs of flux, which is a good thing. Uh, at least not on this side of the board, I don't see anything. So that's encouraging. Um, let's get it on inside. I suppose I'm not really seeing anything to any kind of red flags. So, doesn't look like there's any work in the HDMI area that I can see. So, yeah, we're going to have to get it under the microscope. All right, well, we have made it inside to the workbench. And I'd like to just do a quick check if we could. I've got power, uh, my leads connected to this uh, board. Let's just see kind of current draw we get when I apply 12 volts. Mm, a whole lot of nothing. And the waveform over there kind of shows the same thing. A spike and then a whole lot of nothing. So yeah, this board's rather dead, which would usually mean a, uh, a short somewhere. All right then. So we think we have a short. That's very likely, actually. When it's drawing such a little, such a small amount of current as that. All right. Do we have a five volt short? Negative. No five volt short. Well, what else could it be? Um. It's not a 12 volt short because we have uh, 12 volts. Uh, look over around this area. There's another DC DC converter. Uh, is it going to be a dead south bridge? It could be a dead south bridge. Let's check some of these rails, like a 3.3 around this. Uh, uh, well, I'm, I don't know sure if it, it, this could be the rich text or it could be the uh, dialogue chip. They do the same thing. What about a short right? No. If I had a, if I had a shorted south bridge, I think I would have a short on this little tiny capacitor here. And I don't. No short. Okay. And then there's a 1.15. That's not shorted. So no obvious short. 
How about non-obvious shorts? I'm just checking on variable, various DC-DC rails, DC-DC converters. Um, this is the back of the Wi-Fi Bluetooth chip, which gets, I believe, 1.8 and 3.3. I don't think I'm going to find anything there because I would have found it over here. So... Interesting. We don't have, we don't have a blown fuse, right? Fuse is good. How about this fuse here? Oh. Oh, F seven thousand three is blown, which is interesting. Um, yeah, F seven thousand three is open. Why is it open though? Because I don't. Oh, I do have a short. Oh, okay. I didn't check on, there's, um, of course, 5 volts goes in through F7003, right in here, and there's a capacitor, a large, rather large capacitor on this side, and a rather large one on this side. Both of these are, you know, are, are 5 volts in, like these two points are connected. So, most likely, we could have a shorted, um, I don't know if this is, let me clean it off. This is a DA9065 or if it's an RT5126. I don't know. Does it matter? It does not. There's no obvious scorch marks on that thing. Um, it does look to be the, I think I see the dialog logo. We'll take a look at it under the microscope. But yeah, we've blown our fuse going in. All right, let's see if we can get the, let me see if I can get the microscope set up and we'll take a closer look in that area. Let's take a look under this microscope. Maybe we can get a better view of what we're looking at. Uh, now I can keep bumping the microscope. It is a dialog chip. Um, and I think I have had this issue before. I'm still in continuity mode. Uh, you can see where the fuse comes. There's the uh, fuse on the 5 volts coming in. And we do have a, a short on that side. This is where 5 volts comes in from the far side of the board, actually. So, the most likely issue is going to be one of these capacitors. Either this one or this one. Um, I mean, the, the dialog chip could be bad. I don't think I've seen one of those particular ones fail yet. I'm sure they can. I just haven't run across it yet. So, do either one of these look suspicious? Any obvious cracks? No, they both look, you know, nearly perfect. Uh, let me get... Let's just get set up. We'll do this the easy way, maybe. I'm going to turn my uh, bench supply down to 5 volts. Uh, at. Uh, what can we use? Let's just, let's just say an amp. All right, 5 volts, 1 amp. I am going to move my clip lead. What's well, the best way of doing this? Hmm. Okay. I'm set for five volts, one amp. I'm just going to get a little bit of uh, alcohol. and put it on top of this capacitor. And I'm going to inject 5 volts right here. And we're drawing a full 1 amp. And that alcohol is not evaporating. All right, let's try this one. Is it this one? Uh, 
Ooh. Is it that one? Or is it the chip? I mean, nothing's just, you know, jumping around out, out at me here. Hmm, okay. Well, we're isolated from the rest of the circuit on the 5 volt rail because the fuse is still blown. Let me flip this board over. Does there happen to be some small caps on the other side of this board? Let me see if we can get this flipped over. Make sure I'm looking in the right spot, right in here, right in here. So there are a couple here, I believe, which all look pretty healthy. I believe this is a two volt rail right here coming out of this chip going back into the uh, dialog chip but it also gets 5 volts probably gets 5 volts right here what are the chances our short is somewhere in that area okay I don't mind injecting five volts in that area. I just don't want to do it on a two volt rail. So I want to make sure. Got some large vias down here. And large vias up there. Just want to see if I can find that same area. You can see where the fuse goes right there. The fuse is exactly opposite that set of vias out there. Right about in here. So I can safely inject 5 volts there and check some of these capacitors. <clears throat> Let's see. Get my ground lead hooked back up. Find my probe which was covered in solder mask from the last time I was using it all right now so this is 5 volts anything here I wouldn't think it's any of that but I don't know what it is. That is, well, that's only, that's only 170 milliwatts. So I may have to increase my current. I mean, it's only putting out 0.18 volts because of the current limiting. All right, let's turn this on up. Let's give it a couple of amps. Give it a couple of amps, maybe it'll show itself. just jump out at me here that is almost a watt hmm nothing so it's probably on the other side of the board where I started out at and I just didn't have enough heat. Just did not have enough heat. It's 
probably still one of these capacitors. It just did not have enough heat. Now, yeah, my ground lead came off. It's always fun. Well, it's evaporating off the dialog chip itself. Faster than anything else, it seems. Oh, wait, 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 wait. What about this one right over here? I can't remember. That must be on a 5 volt rail. I think I'm about to burn the thing open. Yeah. I think it's a little one right there. I think we found it. I don't think I've ever had that one fail. But I'm pretty sure that is on the 5 volt rail. That's why I didn't check that one first because I don't think I've ever had that one go bad. Uh, I am going to do a little quick continuity check to make sure that is also a shorted. Let's see. This looks like ground. That's ground. And that is also ground, but it should not be. So, okay. All right. Let's see if I can get one of those from a donor because I have no idea what its value is. Let's just remove it first. Is it in the shot? It's that one. I hope everything. I've got another uh, trinocular lens adapter ordered for this camera because of I have the same problem a lot of other people have had. Um, what I see is not the exact same that I get that gets recorded. Uh, I'll think something's in the shot. And then I find out it's not. And it's very frustrating. Let's add a little bit of leaded solder to this. And this, yeah, this is just cheap king bow solder that came right up no hot air required look at there get a little solder back on those pads is our short gone now I'm thinking it is Continuity mode, null that out. Um, let's just check right here. Yep, we no longer have a short. Excellent. All right, well, let me find the capacitor from a donor and let me find a fuse from a donor.
Well, our F7003 has been replaced. Uh, focus right there, and that little tiny capacitor right there has also been replaced. Uh, and that's all we've done. Let's see if we can uh, do another check with the power supply. I've got it polarity connected properly, I hope. Let's just see what we draw, shall we? There we go. 300 milliamps. Hold and come back down. And you can see the waveform of it there. That looks completely normal. I think we have a working machine. Uh, I do have to clean up. There's some liquid metal. Focus. Come on, focus. There's some liquid metal, you know, uh, wandering going on. I don't see it. It hasn't made it anything else on the board, but it has definitely escaped from where it should be. So let me clean that up some. Uh, we'll get this back out there in the chassis, and we will give it a check. Well, here we are back out in the garage. I think we are ready to test this PS5. I uh, got the liquid metal kind of cleaned up, contained back where it should be. Yeah, I think we're ready. Oh, blue light, fan spinning. That's a start. Still nothing on the monitor. Sometimes it takes a while. I did not really look at the HDMI port. Oh, I think I saw it lock. There we go. Yeah, we're doing a uh, storage check. That looks good. Okay, so we just had a shorted capacitor, blown fuse. Easy, easy. All right, let me see if I can get this put all back together, and we'll give it a final check out. How's that sound? Well, this PS5 is fully reassembled and seems to be working pretty well. I did find out where uh, there was two black screws in this Ziploc bag. I didn't recognize them, but uh, they were from the Blu-ray drive. So, so they had been to the whoever worked on it had been to the Blu-ray drive as well and had left out a couple of screws and left a ribbon cable unhooked. But that all sorted out. So uh, yeah, she's running running well, and uh, yeah, she's good to go. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I thought it was somewhat interesting. If you did, uh, just let me know and give me a thumbs up. Uh, also, if you like this kind of content, please consider checking out my friend's channel, Mr. Steve B. Uh, if you like uh, console repair type content. Uh, but I hope so. I hope I see you in the next repair.